Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Dan Omen, Mike Beer, with the kickoff leg of the 50 Cent Late Pick 4 at Gulfstream Park on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. The opening leg? This race, race number nine. It's the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mare Turf Invitational. It's a grade three. $500,000 is the purse. Regal Glory, the number four, two to one on the morning line for Chad Brown. Uh, this horse, grade one winner of the Matriarch last time out. Couldn't have had an easier trip. I mean, just got loose that day. Yeah, that's true. Um, definitely took advantage uh, to to win that, to pick up that grade one win uh, last time. But that's not to say that she probably didn't deserve one, Dan. She's been a, a really good horse for a long time. She ran excellent uh, as well. Two starts back uh, in the first lady where I personally didn't feel like she got a great ride. The pace is likely to be made by the number nine, Shifty She, as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. I'm not sure if the pace is going to be blazing. Shifty She likely to be in front and likely to be chased by Sweet Melania and in a hurry. That's what occurred last time out in the Suwannee River on December the 18th. Yeah, she's going. She's a fast horse. Um, and I do think they're just going to go to the lead with her in here. I, to me, I think the key to this pace might be the uh, three Lady Spite Spear. Uh, to me, she's another horse who who's really, really fast. And I do think they're gonna go forward with her as well. She got caught up on a, on a pretty solid pace last time and couldn't hold on, but I thought she ran pretty well. Let's talk a little bit about Sweet Milani, a multiple graded stakes winner, earned a career best figure for Pletcher uh, in uh, the race at Gulfstream last time out the Swanee River. Let's watch that race. Shifty She got loose. Sweet Milani was in closest attendance. Sweet Milani attacked on the outside, is going to make the lead and is going to you know, just fend off a resurgent shifty she on the rail. We see in a hurry in third. I thought she had a pretty decent trip with no excuse. Uh, Sweet Milani just best on this day. Yeah, had a perfect trip yeah. in this race, uh, made a big run at Shifty She on the lead off the quarter pole and just managed to get the job done, Dan. Um, she she did run well in there. You know, I'm just not a fan of hers. She, she's been around for a long time. She's run several really good races, and I love her tactical speed. She always gets good trips. I, I just don't think that she's that good. I, I didn't particularly love the performances from any of the one, two, three finishers from that Sewanee River last time, and I don't think I want any of those horses in this race. The X factor in the race is the two Wakanaka making her North American debut. Eight starts in Italy, eight exacta finishes with six wins, including a victory in the Italian 1000 guineas. But she has been away since April. This will be her first start past a mile. This will be uh, her first start uh, against uh, some tough, tough competition. I liked what I saw last time out. Yeah, a little bit of a wild card, I guess. I, I thought she ran well in that most recent start, too. Uh, got a really good trip, but was also just much the best in that race. Um, I thought she was pretty hard to get a gauge on, though, Dan. Six for eight over there. All six wins um, when she's favorite, sub two to one. Um, the, the two losses both came against the same horse. I don't know. Maybe she's pretty good, but I didn't want to bet her in here. The well-bred number three, Lady Spite Spear, won the first four starts to her career. They ran her in the Tropical Park Oaks uh, in her circuit debut. She was the favorite that day for Roger Atfield. It was just a weird race, Mike. It looked like she jumped a couple of tracks in the early portion of the race. She was bearing out on the turn. And despite all that, she gave it a good fight and lost by less than a length. Yeah, I thought she ran well last time. There were some issues going on there. But, man, did she take pressure um, up on the lead the entire way that and was still fighting on uh, to the end of that spot. I, I thought she ran really well in there. Um, obviously a winner of her first four career starts. You know, maybe this pace is fast and it works against her, but I think she's a dangerous horse. Regal Glory has banked over a million dollars in her career. She's the morning line favorite based on her last two figs, triple digit numbers. One in the race will show you the matriarch, a race in which Jose Ortiz just rode her brilliantly, got her right to the lead in this short field, back down the pace in this mile to 48 and two. It turned into a sprint for home and Regal Glory, you give her a trip like this, she's going to win nine times out of 10. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think you want to, you know, put too much stock in this performance. She was in a good spot here, had the softest trip you could possibly imagine, and, and won for fun. I thought she ran great two starts back in the first lady, Dan. Didn't necessarily care for the ride that Ortiz gave her that day because she was going forward, um, and then he just sort of took her back around the first turn there and let her stablemate blow out, get absolutely loose on the lead, and they couldn't catch her. But I, I thought she ran really well two back also. I just think she's really good, Dan. I've liked her for a long time. I thought this would be this would be a great race if she wasn't in here. I just don't know how much money I would want to have in against her, as good as this field is. One of the more fascinating entrants, though, is up next, and that's Gift List making her first start against older horses. Now, we haven't seen Gift List since early June, so this is a tough spot to come off the layoff, but let's watch her race in the Wonder again because she was far behind turning into the stretch, and uh, she's going to angle down towards the inside, and she's going to come with a pretty good run to finish third. And the sixth place horse in this race came back to win two graded stakes in a row at Saratoga, then ran second in the QE2 at Keeneland, all with buyers of 90 and above. Gift list, you see, getting a little bit tight here, going to get outside that tiring pace setter and up for third. It's a really long layoff. She has been working quickly for Brian Lynch uh, for her return. Yeah, maybe it's not an easy spot to come back in. I think there's a lot of upside here, though. Um, I thought she ran well in all three of those uh, races last year, Dan. Really good performances in all of those races. Just got a little unlucky last time um, into the first, got in all kinds of traffic into the first turn of that race. Um, they had to take a hold of her. She got shuffled all the way back out of position, still put in a nice run through the stretch. I think there's a chance she turns out to be pretty good. Almost like Lady Spitespear won her first four lifetime start. She hasn't gotten back to the winner's circle since then. She ran in the Swanee River against Sweet Melania. Just in that race was dominated by horses up close to the pace, and Alms was trying to come from out of it. Can you make that excuse for her? I guess. I mean, you know, certainly she's, she's going to have to find a way to finally take a step forward in this race because, to me, she hasn't done that um, since a really good start to her career you know, ultimately, last time she wound up wide all the way around the track, she just could never get over to save any ground. And, you know, you saw the sort of one, two, three finishers all saving ground early in that race. Um, so maybe that's an excuse for her. I just wonder if she's good enough. From Southern California comes Nicest, recently second in the off-turf grade one American Oaks. Let's go back to the race before that. A marathon event, the red carpet handicap going a mile and three-eighths. And Nicest didn't break well in this race, but was very quick to assume forward position with not a lot of pace going on. Has a chance in it in the stretch. Is just going to be outrun by two sharp horses, both Nage Blanche and Luck return to win their next start. Luck would win the grade three Frankel with a 95 buyer. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're two, you know, decent horses uh, that she's getting out finished by there. She had a great trip, um, never changed leads in the stretch. It just wasn't good enough. Um, I mean, I guess you could say maybe that's, you know, not her game really, a mile and three eighths. I don't know. I didn't think she ran that great in the QE2 Cup either, although that was yielding turf and she couldn't get off the inside in the stretch. I don't know, Dan. I, you know, if she was, if she drifts way up off the six to one morning line, Maybe then I would try to start making excuses for her, but, but at that price, I just don't need this horse. The eighth summer of, of in Saratoga has won three out of her last four races and won like a favorite should. Last time out of the fairgrounds in the blushing KD, uh, she settled in the back of the pack, swung to the far outside in the stretch, and once she changed leads, it took her a while to do so. She was able to wear them down. She's been very, very solid in her last few races for Joe Sharp. She might need to take a slight step forward here. Yeah, this could be a little too tough for her, but maybe she catches some pace and comes with a run, Dan. I mean, I think they're just going to take her back and make one run in this race. And if you you know know anything about her, you know that she just always shows up and runs. Uh, good performance last time with a really strong finish through the stretch. Um, she even got a mile and a half in that grade three, two starts back. It seemed like that could be a question for her. It wasn't. Um, I don't know. I can't say that I love her in here, but I'm not going to be surprised if she's competitive. Shifty She, very consistent from a buyer speed figure standpoint, the expected pace setter in this race. But we saw her have a lonely lead on the backstretch last time out, and she failed to contain Sweet Melania. Now she's got to go an extra uh, 16th of a mile. Yeah, that could be a problem for her. Um, you know, listen, her, her recent form is actually pretty good. And, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and knock this horse who should be forward early in this race. Um, but I don't like that she lost to Sweet Melania last time. 
And then I would just say, you know, if you really were thinking about betting her, you know, go back to that Saratoga race, Dan, I um, mean, the De La Rose, where she just got loose on a relatively soft pace and Regal Glory came with a huge run and just ran her right over in the stretch. In a hurry, looks like one of those late developing Shug McGahee types, third in the Swanee River last time out. I thought all in all, a good loose pocket trip. We saw her come out with a little bit of a look at it in the stretch. She couldn't sprint home with the top two. She's getting better, but I wonder if that race, race last time out was her best, and I think that's not good enough. Yeah, that's how I looked at it, too. I mean, I just didn't really want the Suwannee River uh, horses. And, and the defense of In a Hurry, I think you're right. You know, she it feels like she is getting better. We see this with these shug horses all the time. Um, they stay in training and they improve through racing. And maybe that's happening with In a Hurry as well. Um, but it feels like she would have to take a pretty significant step forward to win this race. Completing the field is a horse that I think I want to fool around with in the multis. That's bipartisanship, who's 20 to 1 for Graham Motion. As a maiden, she was group placed in Ireland against some good horses over the summer. Uh, she won the Tropical Park Oaks at a big price last time out. We're going to watch that race right now. Uh, she was buried down inside most of the way. And you're going to see her try to split horses and steady hard off of heels Thankfully for her, she does get a seam, and once she sees the seam, she goes right on through and she settles it. Yeah, I mean, she comes with a good finish. She was able to regather here and get the job done. Um, it's worth pointing out, even though she had to study in the stretch, Dan, she had a, a, overall a really good trip in that race. Saved ground all the way. They were moving right along in front of her, so the pace was there. Um, and when she did get clear, she got the job done. I'm a huge fan of hers. I bet her two starts back. Um, at Saratoga at, or at Belmont or Aqueduct rather at a really big price and she couldn't get there but she didn't run a terrible race obviously improved the last time a lot of upside for her she's gonna have to overcome that outside post position and older horses let's take a look at our top picks kicking off the 50 cent late pick four at Gulfstream on World Cup Saturday Regal Glory like you Mike I really just don't want to have a ton of money in against her she just looks rock solid on paper with tactical speed yeah, I just think she might be the best horse in here. I, I couldn't talk myself into putting somebody on top over her. I'm very interested in gift list. I know it's a layoff for her. I think there's a lot of potential there. You know, bipartisanship, you know, last time was the time, but I feel like I'm obligated to throw her in there one more time because I feel like she's going to be a price again. I'm a little scared of Lady Spite Spear. Maybe if she is able to get up close to the pace and get first run on them, turning for home, you have to focus a little bit better than that last start. Four five eleven three for Mike. Four three eight eleven for me. It's the World Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Good luck.